It's undeniable. Arduino is the most widespread microcontroller ecosystem in the world. From hobbies to the film industry, it's used everywhere. The internet is full of awesome Arduino projects thanks to the many plug-and-play libraries that simplify adding different peripherals to these microcontrollers. But if you ever programmed one of these boards, you know there's a dark side to this system that no one really talks about. The first big Every time you tweak your code, you have to recompile and upload it to the board. I'm probably not the only one who's flashed the system at least 60 times just to fine-tune a PID controller. In the beginning, this might not seem like a big deal, but once you start building a more complex system, you will find yourself scratching your head wondering why your dream gadget isn't working properly. This brings us to the second major flaw, the lack of proper debugging. A very few Arduinos come with a built-in plug-and-play debugger. The standard approach is to print telemetry data to the serial port. But let's be honest, let's get messy really fast. Not to mention, constantly reporting system status can slow down everything significantly. Now you might say, but what about the more advanced boards like STM32 Nucleo series, Raspberry Pi Pico or ESP32 which supports JTAG debugging? Sure, but there's a catch. When you hit a breakpoint, your code stops running. In some situations like robotics, that's simply not an option. If the software pauses even for a tiny moment, your moving hardware could become unstable. My name is Daniel, and in this short video, I'm going to show you a solution for both of these problems. But first, let's quickly talk about why this is such a unique challenge with microcontrollers. Unlike regular computers, microcontrollers pack the processor, memory, peripherals into a single chip. Since these devices are small and inexpensive, they don't have much memory. The amount of memory available dictates how can you approach programming them. For example, dynamic memory allocation is basically a no-go when you only have 2 kilobytes of memory. So we need a solution that's lightweight, has minimal CPU overhead and still allows us to manipulate and diagnose the hardware in real time. To achieve this, we will be using two libraries. The first one will be Commander API, which is a tiny and resource efficient command parser. In a nutshell, it creates a bridge between a string and the command in the C++ domain. The second library that we will be using is Shellminator, which is a terminal interface that provides a more modern command line experience acting as a bridge between the user and the command parser. Let's quickly install these two libraries using the Arduino Library Manager. And while the libraries are being installed, I would like to briefly touch on the Shellminator documentation. Everything I explain in this video is truly detailed in the Shellminator documentation. For example, the creators have provided an interactive demo that you can try directly in your browser, making it much easier to understand what each feature does. Additionally, the full source code for each example is available at the bottom of each page, so you can simply copy and paste it into Arduino ID. Now let's get back to coding. For simplicity, let's open example 200 from Shellminator's examples and create a copy of it. In this video, I will be using the Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi board. Let's compile the code and upload it to the board. Since the Arduino ID serial monitor is quite limited in functionality, I will be using a program called PuTTY, as I'm working on a Windows system. On Mac and Linux, the standard screen terminal command will do the trick as well. If we did everything correctly, resetting the board should display the terminal banner text. To start, let's check if the example works. Type the help command and see what happens. As you can see, the interface lists all the supported shortcuts and the available commands in the system. Obviously, we won't need these commands for our system, so let's try modifying the cat command to display the milliseconds since the program start. I will rename the cat command to millis. To start with, we have to rename the callback function prototype. Then, rename the command itself with a short description about what it does. Also, update the callback function name at the end in the API tree. Also, we have to rename the actual implementation of the callback function and modify the functionality to print out the return value of the millis function into a new line. We can see that the upload fails. This is because the serial port is open in PuTTY and unfortunately only one software can access the serial port at a time. So we need to close the terminal before uploading the code to the board. From a debugging perspective, this approach is much cleaner and more convenient as it allows you to query the parameter you are interested in, rather than printing the value of every variable to the serial port. 
So now that we are created a query, let's try to interact with the system. First, let's start small. Create a command that turns on the LED on the board and another command that turns it off. Just as before, rename the callback function prototype and modify the API tree data. At the bottom, we have to create the logic inside the callback function. We just use the good old digital write function to turn on or off the built-in LED. After we uploading it, we can see that we can manipulate the LED real-time from the command line interface. So the core concept is to create a query command for each parameter that might be important for the system's operation and the control command for each peripheral to change its state. If we start by developing the terminal commands and initially control the system from there, it will be much easier to automate the whole system later. Another advantage of this development approach is that the terminal commands can remain in the system even when it runs automatically. If an issue arises along the way, identifying the root cause will be much easier since all the diagnostic tools were created at the beginning of the development process. A terminal command is considered complete when it can be parameterized using arguments. This is useful because the same command can be repurposed for different tasks. An argument is essentially a C string containing various useful information. From the string, we need to extract the required argument and the value for it. Fortunately, the commander library supports a wide range of argument handling methods. Detailed description of these can be found in the Shaminator examples, starting from example 202. Let's look at a simple example. We want to take an analog sample using the ADC to a terminal command. In the Arduino system it is easy, this can be done using the analog grid function which takes an argument, which is the ADC pin. Our goal is to create a terminal version of the analog grid function, where the pin number is provided as an argument. As usual, we first need to define the callback prototype and configure the API tree. Then, in the callback function, we create an argument object. Since we only need one argument, we define a position-dependent argument that attempts to process the first provided argument. Once retrieved, we try to extract its value. If this fails, we display an error message to help the user resolve the problem. If successful, we read the ADC result from the specified channel and print it to the console. Let's try it. I hooked up a potentiometer to analog pin 0, and when I rotate it, I can see that the analog grid function works from the terminal interface. The next step is handling position independent arguments. One thing that always bothered me about the C language is that the argument order is fixed. This isn't a big issue when dealing with one or two arguments, but when multiple arguments are involved, it can be problematic. In contrast, languages like Python or MATLAB are much more flexible since they can work with argument name value pairs. Fortunately, the Commander API supports this functionality as well. Let's create a terminal version of the digital write function. For this, we need two arguments the pin identifier and the output state. As usual, we start by defining the command and filling the API tree. Next, we create the objects for the two arguments. The main difference from the previous example is that these will be position independent arguments, meaning their order doesn't matter. Commander also supports both short and long argument names. Similar to the previous approach, we check whether the arguments were successfully parsed, and if they were, we call the digital write function with the extracted values. Let's give it a try. If everything was set up correctly, 
we should be able to toggle the LED on the panel using the digital write command. This LED is connected to pin 13. As expected, the function works flawlessly on any other pin as well. Unfortunately, this video could only cover this much, but the Shellminator and the Commander API offer many more features. They can handle, for example, system variables, password protection, communication over Wi-Fi or Bluetooth low energy, text formatting, and even you can create a minimalist SQUI with it. If you enjoyed the video, don't hesitate to press the like button. If you would like to see more tutorials on using this system, just leave a comment. And if you are feeling extra awesome, consider treating the developers to a coffee. Links are in the description, thanks for watching.